In September 1959, a Convair B-58 Hustler, Aircraft 22, made three low-altitude penetration flights from Carswell Air Force Base, Fort Worth. All were made at over 700 miles an hour and at 500 feet or less above the terrain. During these flights, performance of the aircraft was better than predicted and fully reliable. The crew reported environmental conditions favoring maximum efficiency and comfort. Aerodynamically, its delta wing configuration proved the B-58 to have particular, even unique adaptability for high-speed, low-level operations. On these flights, the structure of the B-58 endured a wide variety of temperature and wind conditions over differing terrains. For a more intimate picture of these plus factors in the B-58, let's follow flight number three, the longest of the series, which took place on September 18th. This flight went from Carswell to Edwards Air Force Base, California, then to a point over the mountains near Vandenberg Air Force Base, where the airplane started back across the San Joaquin Valley. This portion of the flight was made entirely at low altitude and amounted to two hours elapsed time. Shortly after taking up its westerly course, the airplane reached its assigned speed of 610 knots, or better than 700 miles per hour, for the 1,217 nautical miles of the outward leg. The main objectives of the flight were twofold. First, to evaluate the ability of a crew to fly for long distances at low altitude and high speed. Second, to obtain data for verification of predictions on performance, especially as to range and speed. Fully briefed as to the test plane's course and time of arrival, Convair camera crews were placed at selected positions on a West Texas lake. The total result was 10 seconds of film, or a couple of blinks of the human eye. Farther out in the mountains of West Texas, still another Convair camera crew awaited. On its approach at Mach 0.92, the B-58 could not be heard. Obviously, this keeping pace with its own sound could prove a factor in escaping enemy observation at low level. As we have just heard, the sound of a B-58 is intense during the moment of its passing directly overhead. Strangely enough, though, observers at no more than two miles off its flight path reported its characteristic whoosh as barely discernible. Over south-central New Mexico, the pilot descended to 200 feet to seek out areas of lush vegetation in order to check bug accretion on the windshield. The few bug impacts were found to have a negligible effect on the pilot's vision. This can be attributed to the highly swept configuration of the windshield. Low-flying aircraft normally experience considerable atmospheric turbulence over rough, arid terrain in warm weather. Aircraft 22 was no exception, with just such conditions encountered frequently along its westward path. However, Several factors combined to provide an incredibly smooth ride despite these atmospheric disturbances. The most important of these was the small response of the aircraft to gusts owing to its low aspect ratio delta wing. A secondary reason was the B-58 structural arrangement and rigidity providing good damping of the airframe. 
Navigation was accomplished by pilotage, using dead reckoning and visual checkpoints. Several important features had been built into the B-58 to provide ease of maneuverability and increased flight safety over current operational bombers. For instance, the powered flight control system, which gives effortless pilot control and smooth, positive response immediately. Next, the automatic G limiting provision within the system, assuring that maneuvers are kept within tolerable limits, a fact that is also reassuring to the crew. The track and distance of the flight were planned to simulate the varying terrain and targets of an actual low-level penetration against an enemy. Thus, on this third flight, we have already seen Aircraft 22 coursing swift and low across our southwestern plains. Next, the mountains of California, forming a screen to be skillfully used by the B-58 crew against enemy detection. Now, target dead ahead, actually Edwards Air Force Base, but potentially a hostile military installation. The payload for this type of mission, a disposable bomb pod slung beneath the B-58 slender fuselage. Next, the secondary target, Vandenberg Air Force Base. But worsening weather over the coastal area cancels that out. So the B-58, still hugging the ground, makes its escape. On a mission of this type, both targets had been chosen, by the way, to avoid heavily populated areas. Once clear and away, the airplane goes to altitude, a normal maneuver for maximum range. The return leg at cruise altitude was routine and uneventful. Here, the crew was able to compare notes on their mission and, incidentally, on themselves. Their reaction to the low altitude flight was unanimous. Contrary to some opinion, it had been an easy task, accomplished without physical or psychological hindrances. No neurotic depression, no loss of sense of reality, no tunneling of vision or excessive fatigue. In fact, it was a flight that could be done by any B-58 crew without special training or preparation. Arrival back at Carswell marked the completion of a round trip of 2,269 nautical miles, which was flown in four hours and three minutes. The importance of adding the low-level penetration to this nation's defense arsenal at no loss in high-altitude supersonic capability cannot be overemphasized. The B-58 can sneak under the enemy's radar net, fly at a speed making visual or audible detection extremely difficult, and deliver its payload on target. For low-level missions of this type, an airplane must have the aerodynamic design, the structural integrity, a safe and comfortable crew environment, maneuverability, and above all, speed. Such an airplane is the B-58.